In this video, I would like to show you a very interesting experimental work which was conducted by some of my students doing their design project. The project was to find a way by design to reduce the overall weight of the shipping container. It was the year 2008, a multinational company which is in the shipping business contacted us and asked us to find ways by which we could reduce the weight of the shipping containers. In today's world of global commerce, these shipping containers have become a very regular thing. You will see these containers in a seaport, on ships, on railroads and on trucks. It is hard to imagine how world could manage to transport things from one country to another or from one place to another within a country. Perhaps it is even harder to believe that the containerization of shipping goods is not a very old concept. It was in 1956, Malcolm McLean, a transport entrepreneur from North Carolina, USA, sent off his first shipping cargo from the port in New Jersey to the port of Houston with his 58 of the 11 meter long containers on a ship owned by him. This concept of putting cargo inside a container changed the shipping industry and brought it to the level what it is today in terms of the volume of materials being shipped domestically and internationally. The most amazing feature of this method of shipping is the container itself which can be loaded onto a truck, railroad or on a ship without opening the container or removing any content. This reduced the time that was lost in loading and unloading for different modes of transportation and the labor cost. Because of these reasons, these containers are also known as intermodal shipping containers. A container is actually a box, but this is a very strong box that can be lifted by a crane, by a fork, can face rough sea weather without getting its content wet, free from package, pilferage, etc. This box can be easily loaded or unloaded from a ship or a truck so that the ship and the truck can move on to do the next job, saving important businesses. Weight of an empty 20 feet long container is 2.2 tons, which can take a payload of about 28.2 tons. Reducing the weight of this container will not only increase the payload weight, but also reduce the fuel consumption for the transportation. Much of the focus in this project was therefore paid on the finite element analysis. One area that was also focused was the flooring of the container. The floor of the container is made of steel bars, each weighing about 16 kg and on top is fitted with hardwood or plywood boards. The flooring board is about 28 mm thick and is made of plywood made of apitong or carrying hardwoods. Apitong is traditionally used for making plywood as apitong is very tough, dense and durable wood. However, the future supply of apitong could be in problem due to the loss of forest. This will also lead to price rise. Therefore, the team decided to find an alternative material for the floorboard and the aims of reducing the weight of the floor and long-term sustainability. It was decided to develop a composite material using bamboo. Bamboo is classified as a grass and can be a good alternative to hardwoods. Bamboo is the fastest growing plant, hence easily renewable and is widely used for load-bearing applications such as roof support, bridges, scaffold and as reinforcement in clay and concretes. Bamboo, if made in the form of a composite, can be made onto, into a board. Bamboo strips were soaked in NaOH water solution in the ratio of 40 gram of sodium hydroxide in 1 liter of water. Bamboo strips were left in the solution for 72 hours and then thoroughly washed with water followed by drying in open air for 2 days. Washing in sodium hydroxide solution was done to remove any greasy material from the strips and hemicellulose as these substances will reduce the adhesion strength between the epoxy and the bamboo strips.
Epoxy Epicoat 1006 system was used along with the supplied hardener in the ratio of 10 is to 6 epoxy is to hardener. Prior to this, wax was applied on the walls of the mold for easy removal of the cured composite from the mold. The epoxy hardener solution was poured into the wooden mold. Neatly arranged bamboo strips were then dipped inside the epoxy hardener solution already poured in the mold. The strips were aligned in one direction in each layer. There was 90 degree orientation between two adjacent bamboo strip layers. Cross layering was done to obtain uniform property of the composite in two orthogonal directions. This process would make a bi-directionally oriented composite. The bamboo strips were pressed inside the mold to ensure complete wetting with epoxy. The second layer was placed in 90 degree orientation with respect to the first layer. Ensuring complete wetting of the fiber by the matrix is very important while making polymer composites. This process of filling the mold with epoxy and then fibers should be finished within the given time before curing of the epoxy initiates. In this epoxy case, it was 47 minutes. Top lid of the mold was then placed over the mix and sufficient weight was placed on top of this lid so that the curing process could occur under compressive stress for good bonding and high density of the material. This also ensured that bubbles were slowly removed from the epoxy which could become defects in a composite. A total of 190 kg weight was placed over the 14 inch by 14 inch cross section of the mold.
The curing process was 24 hours at room temperature, followed by op opening of the mold and cutting the prepared composite in specimen size of 2 inch by 1.1 inch cross section and 12 inch of length. This sample size was for three point bending test according to the Institute of International Container Lessers Association standards. Three point bending test was performed on the bamboo epoxy composite for flexural, modulus, and strength properties, and the data were then compared with similar results on the apitone plywood specimen. The composite showed delamination in the middle layer near the neutral line. This was also the mode of failure for the apitone plywood specimen. Apitone plywood showed fracture at the center of the bottom layer where tensile stress was maximum. This mode of fracture was not seen for the bamboo epoxy composite. So the final results were very impressive. For example, the composite, the bamboo epoxy composite gave a maximum load of about 693, 749 and 703 kgs for the failure of the specimen, whereas apitong plywood could only give up to about 430 kg of load. Another epitome plywood short grain gave even lower values in the range of 250 to 300 kg. So from this aspect, the composite actually qualified for the load requirement which was at least more than equal to 690 kg for this specimen. Another property which is the flexural modulus in gigapascal. So, the bamboo epoxy composite gave 4.4 gigapascal whereas apitong plywood both long grain and short grain gave much lower values. The composite had about 46% higher value compared to apitong long grain and about 74% higher than apitong short grain. Another result was flexural strength in megapascal. Here also we found that the bamboo epoxy composite gave much higher values of flexural strength, 41% and 64% higher than apitong long grain and apitong short grain plywoods. This picture shows how the composite and apitong plywood would show when three-point bending type of test is done between two bars. So for example, these two bars represent the, the bars of the container and apitong plywood will deflect much more than the composite. So from based on this analysis, the group found that it might be possible to remove some of the bars or steel members in the bottom frame of the container. So this way there will be great weight saving without any reduction in the performance of the container. So there will be significant saving in the weight. So based on the analysis, the group found that at least three or four members, the steel members could be removed if we use the composite. And each cross member weighs 16 kg. So it will be number of members removed multiplied by 16 kg in terms of the weight saving. Now, as we saw in the summary results, the load, average load, the composite could take was 715 kg, whereas Apitong long, long grain took only 421 kg and Apitong short grain could take only 257. So there is a great improvement in the load bearing capacity of the composite. So from this analysis, it was found that 
a specific strength or strength to density ratio for the composite was 59.4 and for epitome it was 53.4 so there was at least 11 percent increase in the specific strength of the composite when compared with epitome plywood if we are going to use the steel member as they are then there is possibility of saving the weight by cutting the thickness of the wood or plywood in this case this much thickness of the wood could be removed without any without affecting the performance so thus we see that in this project the group found that epoxy and bamboo based composite can do a much better job than the currently used plywood so therefore it was recommended that the company could change the floorboard from epitome plywood to a much better bamboo based composite